Hi, and welcome to iTalk Movies. Tonight, I'm here with the beautiful Rachel Brooks Smith, so stay tuned. Welcome to Popcorn Talk, featuring movie discussion, news, and interviews. Popcorn Talk, we talk movies. And now, here's Popcorn Talk's iTalk Movies. Hey guys. Hey guys, welcome to iTalk Movies here on Popcorn Talk. Tonight, I'm here with Rachel Brooks Smith. Hi. How are you? Hello. I'm good, how are you? You guys, make sure to download, rate, and subscribe on YouTube and iTunes. And you can also connect with me on Twitter and Instagram at JamieBanks underscore. And where can they find you on social media? Yes, um, Instagram, it's rbrooksmith. And then on Twitter, it's Rachel B. Smith. And Facebook as well, Rachel Brooks Smith. So. Awesome. Yep. Well, thank you so much for being here today. What have you been up to lately? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am really excited. I just have, I have a film on sci-fi right now that I play the lead in named Gina Delamo. And um, it's such a dream come true uh, role for me because I've always wanted to do action hero roles. I, I grew up a very competitive gymnast, so I got really into dancing and fighting after that. And um, after I did, you know, I did a dance film and a cheerleading film and you know some other roles along the way the next step was okay action here that's we go that's great and this is atomic shark you're talking this about this is right? atomic shark well that <laughs> sounds scary i'm so scared of sharks but um we actually have a trailer for the audience so that they kind of yes. know what we're talking about if you want to take a look at that oh, yeah let's do it man's deadliest weapon just grew teeth it's a weapon of mass destruction that's starving Telling you I saw something out there. It was glowing. It was red. There were rumors of a Soviet sub sinking about 30 miles out from San Diego. If the shark is radioactive, impossible to kill. So any firepower touches that thing. Coast is toast. Sharks! A whole lot of them! This time, it's nuclear. He's coming back! How can a shark move that fast? Atomic shark. Awesome. Yeah, it was fun. <laughs> so, obviously, you didn't use any real sharks, correct? Oh, or did you? They're all real. Oh, really? All of them. <laughs> Were you ever scared <laughs> in the film? Um... Well, I had to do a lot of my own stunts, so I don't necessarily think I was, I was scared because, no, we did not use real sharks. Um, but I actually am pretty terrified of, of sharks. I actually had, like, a reoccurring nightmare when I was growing up that oh I got gosh. eaten by sharks. So it was pretty uh, ironic to me to land this role. Um, wow. But, I, I mean, I loved it. it honestly, it was such a dream come true. We, uh, we filmed it in Puerto Rico, so, I mean, you wouldn't love that. Um, I did get... Uh, kind of attacked, <laughs> I think I was attacked, by a swarm of jellyfish, which oh, was wow. not fun. Me and um, one of my really great friends who played Kylie in the movie, we were just, we had to do a lot in the water. So, you know, we're swimming and just all of a sudden, we're like, why is it burning? Why is it burning? Oh my gosh. Was that on film? No, thank goodness. But the locals all saw and they laughed at us oh. like crazy. <laughs> Are you a strong swimmer? Um, I am. And I, uh, I did a lot of swimming in this one. Uh, it just, especially, you know, different days when you're on a film, you're shooting the same thing over and over and over again. So a lot of the, the kind of end of the movie, I'm swimming a lot. Um, but there were some really cool just action uh, scenes, especially one where we had a really cool girl fight scene. Cool. And another one where I tackle my boss. I mean, I'm pretty much just tackling people the whole movie. That's so fun. <laughs> and so I know you have a background in gymnastics. Mm -hmm. Do you have it in martial arts too? or? Yeah, I've trained a lot. Um, like I said, I, I grew up first a very competitive gymnast and uh, actually broke my hand and had surgery. It was a really challenging time in my life because uh, that was just my life growing up uh, was gymnastics and it was also my mom's life too. So it was really hard to to get the strength to be done um, but when I finally did and after I had surgery uh, I actually saw the first dance film I had ever seen and that film was center stage and uh, I just had that it was like that life-changing moment I mean I was 13 and I just like sat in the movie theater and I just cried and I think I just uh, you know had that major love and obsession for storytelling from that moment and I just committed to myself and said, you know, I am going to be like that girl that inspired me so much up on the screen. Um, and, you know, throw a long, challenging, uh, you know, twist and turns of, of events um, to actually get to play the lead in the sequel to that movie, Center Stage 2. 
that was my first big, um, you know, real acting job. And there's, that's a long story, and I do a lot of motivational speaking uh, about it. But um, that's yeah. that's so inspirational to me. Just you saw a movie and you wanted to be an actress, mm-hmm. and you become the lead in the next movie. That is, that's just a testament that you can achieve your dreams. Absolutely. Oh, I'm so passionate about that. I mean, it's one of my favorite things to do. You know what I call um, my my brand, uh, disruptive apparel. I do disruptive workshops, and I incorporate a lot of you know movement. It's a movement with a message, and I just believe. So so much in the power of having, uh, you know, goals and dreams, really knowing what you want first, knowing what you want, working hard towards it every day, being brave enough to say, this is what I want. Um, so I, don't, I think a lot of people don't ever really, really question themselves and their lives and, um, and then, you know, going after it every day. Yeah. Um, and that's a big reason why I even started this disruptive movement of just questioning yourself, your thoughts, the people in your life, the things that you do every day and saying, you know, are the things and the thoughts and the people in my life, are they helping me achieve my goals and my dreams and helping me just be the best me? And, and if they're not, then realize that you have the power to change that. That's awesome. So yeah. what was the experience like acting in center stage two? Oh my gosh, it was like, I mean, it's so surreal even now. <laughs> and actually center stage three just recently came out as well. Um, and I got to, you know, my character comes back in that film as That's well. That's so cool. And it actually really mirrored a lot of my real life with my real little sister. Um, so it was very, I mean, that film is just, there's something special with me in yeah. Center Stage. I don't know. Let's, let's take a look at a clip from Center yes, Stage 2. Yes, let's do that. What was your favorite part working in this movie? Um, I mean, I loved uh, working with, you know, the the cast and, um, you know, Kenny Wormald's an amazing dancer and actor and Peter Gallagher, I mean, and Ethan Stifle, all the people that I literally just, I watched center stage, not only obviously in the movie theater, but so many, like so many times and it would help me get through challenges. So to literally get to, to be filming it and play, you know, Kate Parker in this movie, I mean, it almost brings me to tears just, you know, thinking about it. That's amazing. Vibing is driving me crazy. <laughs> You're such a great dancer. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Yeah, I've worked really hard to be good. Obviously, going from a gymnast to a dancer, you think it definitely helps in some ways, but it's actually very challenging because it's completely different, um, you know, techniques. So, what dances have you been able to do, or dance backgrounds? Um, so, I actually moved out. Um, like I said, I. After I saw that movie, it was like I knew exactly what I wanted, and I went right into dancing and acting and singing classes. Um, and I moved out here um, when I was 18 to LA on a scholarship program that I had auditioned for. And oh my gosh, I was like dying that I actually got in. Um, and I, in that program, it's called the Edge Performing Arts Program, and um, I had to dance like eight hours a day, you know, and they brought in acting coaches and singing coaches and um, all different kinds of dance. So, I mean, honestly, that's a big reason why I think I was even um, able to play that part because I had to be able to do both point and break dancing and, you know, all, I mean, just a ton of different um, types of dance that um, and act. So there's just uh, there's not a lot of, of girls that do both, all those things. So, um, and it was crazy because it literally was I, during that time, that year period when I was doing my uh, scholarship program, I couldn't audition. I couldn't work. I couldn't. Um, I wouldn't have even been able to audition for something. Um, it wasn't. It was like as soon as I got done with the program, that's when I saw like a casting call on the wall that said, you know, auditions for Center Stage Two, and I was just like, Ugh. like my heart wow. just dropped. And I almost didn't go, but it was that moment where I was just like, you know, sitting in your room trying to convince yourself not to go. Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, heard that voice and that feeling, just like you have to go. That was your destiny. That is awesome. Yeah. So what other movies are you going to be in coming up? Um, well, uh, sci- on Sci-Fi, Atomic Shark is still playing. And yes. actually, we have a really special um, movie corner on disruptiveapparel.com that um, I actually made Atomic Shark shirts, especially for the film. Cool. Um, and uh, Chalk It Up is one that I'm really excited about, uh, especially growing up a gymnast. Um, it's a gymnastics movie. Um, and a lot of the girls from Stick It uh, are in it as well, and that are also my some of my best friends, you know, Nikki Suhu and Maddie Curley. And um, I was just so grateful to get to work on that uh, that film, and um, it comes out in September. 
and uh, I play a pretty feisty little little character in that one. That's awesome. Um, but it was just so, it was so crazy to get back in the gym. You know, when we filmed a lot of the, I mean, we filmed the whole movie basically in the gymnasium. So um, uh, to get back up on a high beam and to feel what that feels like and to think about the things I used to be able to do when I was younger, <laughs> and it blows my mind. <laughs> Did you miss it not doing it for so long? Um, well, I always kept up like tumbling, um, and even still, I think that's what kind of led me into you know dance and martial arts. So I still got that physical element. And um, one of the biggest things I always say to you know young performers is try and be as versatile as possible. Um, one of my favorite things is something that Meryl Streep said. Um, there was something like you know the more you do in life, the better artist you'll be, and you just never know what skill or talent that you're going to be learning is going to help you be a better artist or get land a certain role. Um, and so many things that I've done, I mean, that's exactly, you know, it's a true testament to that's that. That's really cool. What would be your dream role? Um, to play opposite Sandra Bullock in an action movie. <laughs> um, I'm slightly obsessed with Sandra Bullock. I kind of love her, so. That would be so awesome. Yeah. So tell me more about Disruptive Apparel. Um, yeah, I, like I said, I'm, I, we just launched it, something I'm really passionate about, and uh, it really all started because there was a lot of things in my um, in my life that I was like, okay, I'm doing all these different habits, um, and I just started to realize. Like, have you ever had that thing when you know you open the refrigerator and you're like, all of a sudden you have this moment of like, why am I doing this? I'm not hungry. Like mm -hmm. I'm just doing it out of habit, and I had realized, um, especially um, I have a, an ebook coming out called A Disruptive Roadmap to Being Unbreakable, and that's my company is called Unbreakable Productions. Um, and we just always aim to um, put out really inspirational content to inspire people to, you know, go after their dreams and believe in themselves um, and always get back up again and knowing that no matter what happens to you along the way, <laughs> like a challenge might suck and it's hard, but being able to be disruptive in your thinking and saying, okay, this is what's going on and it's not fun and it's awful, <laughs> but what can I do to actually make it better? Because so many times um, in my life I would just get stuck in this pattern I watch my friends and other people do the same thing of when you get through and when you have challenges happen to you, which is all going to happen, like, you know, which is, that's just the world, <laughs> um, especially if you're going after big goals and dreams, of course that stuff's going to happen, um, you know, but to actually say, you know, what can I do to make this better? Um, instead of saying, oh, why is this happening to me or why am I so unlucky? Um, you know, your, your brain is just like this awesome computer. Um, at least that's what I, what I kind of think of it as. And whatever question you ask it, it's going to, you know, search for answers. And so I just wanted to create something that would be a constant reminder to myself and hopefully to others to, to question their thoughts and, and to live a really curious, creative, you know, disruptive lifestyle. And you hold workshops on this, right? I do. That's so great. So how does someone get enrolled in that? Um, so I have them just on my website. Um, you know, they can uh, contact us there. And um, but I actually just partnered with something called uh, the Big Show, and something that I'm very, uh, I'm just very grateful for. So pretty much every weekend, like actually, I'm going this weekend to back to Indianapolis. Um, I work with young um, performers, actors, dancers, singers, and um, we do disruptive workshops at the Big Show. Um, and so I get to, I mean, everything that I love, you know, <laughs> it is right there. So, um, you know, when I'm not on films and TV shows or sets, I'm, I'm there working with, uh, with kids, helping That's them. Great. So do you prefer acting, dancing, or singing, or love them all equally? Or? Oh, it's just <laughs> such a hard question. Um, I love them all. I mean, I'm, but my, my like life, you know, career goals is acting. Um, I will always, always dance. I'll be like the 90 year old just dancing around. Um, and I'll, you know, I'll always sing. Um, but I mean, acting is definitely my main, main focus, but I love to inspire people. Um, and, and, and it's really cool too, especially for other actors out there, um, really playing with dance to find characters and, and with music, you know, I always, when I get, um, new roles, um, or even auditions, I'm, I put on different music that will put me into a certain state and I'll start moving to that. And as soon as I start doing that, I'll just get different ideas and different things will come into my head about what this character might be like and, and choices that are um, interesting and, and exciting. That's really cool. So could you see putting out an EP or album in the future? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I have a song that's actually in Atomic Shark called Blindside. And, um, you know, really, that's actually one of my big goals for this year is to kind of really really do it in a big way. That's great. And what genre would you focus on? 
Um, I mean, like, you know, pop, dance, pop. music. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any, I mean, I just love doing stuff, anything to inspire. I mean, that's like my mission in life, I think, um, is just to, to always ask myself, like, okay, is this doing something to either motivate, empower, inspire myself or the world around me? Um, yeah. That's really great. I love that you're so inspirational and you genuinely want to help people. And I do. Like, I really do. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's very genuine. And I, yeah. and I think it comes from such a, um, a place in me because I did grow up um, being a very competitive gymnast. It's, it's so hard. Like, <laughs> And I put myself through, I think I made it hard for myself, though. I put myself through a lot of stress um, that I didn't necessarily need to or other people maybe didn't. I just, I was such a perfectionist to a fault. Um, and so I just, when I see younger kids, especially, um, I see the, all those insecurities and all those things, I mean, that I still face and I think we all do, but especially when I was younger, I just had all this self-doubt and, and these insecurities and, and I'd worry all the time about what people thought about me or if I was going to get the job or get the audition or if my hair was okay or if I, you know, with everything, everything. Um, and I just, you know, from different things that I've learned along the way, and I'm in no way <laughs> like a guru, I don't know everything at all, but just different things that have helped me, if I can help um, somebody else, you know, maybe have a, a easier journey uh, to their goals and dreams, that's like, ugh, it just makes me so happy. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. And you put out weekly videos, right, on your I do, um, both like Instagram, and I do a lot of Facebook Live. I really love that. And like I said, I'm coming out with my ebook that I'm going to be doing a really special interactive uh, videos with people that purchase it and, um, and yeah some really cool disruptive apparel videos that we're going to be doing uh, all to kind of create you know a positive cool. message and did you recently just make one of these videos I did yeah. recently just make one Let's of these videos check it out. All right. <laughs> um, yeah this is something I uh, you know it was, kind of <laughs> it was one of those things again that I think everything that we've done um, that we've really uh, my team and I use the disruptive message of, of being very disruptive in our thinking of you know, what can we do uh, to create something great and do it in a fun way? Awesome. <laughs> did you film that in Venice? We did like, actually, and I remember even even the whole thing being kind of stressed out. You know, as that can happen on not when you're filming something. Um, but I literally was like, okay, I'm gonna live my message, and I'm not gonna you know let that get in the way. And um, I even told my team, I was like, guys, just trust me on this because I, I produced and I choreographed it too. So um, beautiful. Thank you. And yeah, the the guy I danced with Steve. Steve O. Jones, um, he actually is in uh, the one of the Step Up movies too. Oh, great! So, That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. And so, speaking of guys you've worked it mm -hmm. or people you've worked with in movies, who have been some of your favorite celebrities to work with? Um, well, I did um, recently. Well, another film I have coming out um, uh, called Cold Moon that I'm extremely excited about. Um, again, I feel like every film role <laughs> has been a a literal like dream come true story of uh, being able to be asking myself what it is that I want, uh, being brave enough to say it, and just working towards it every day. And, you know, writing writing out goals and seeing pictures of it, uh, visualizing, I'm really into all that stuff. Um, and uh, so Cold Moon, um, I got to work with Christopher Lloyd. Cool. Um, you know, and I grew up watching him in Back to the Future and Angels in the Outfield and, you know, so many amazing uh, shows. And so I, I played opposite him. My character in Cold Moon is a... Uh, a Southern Belle character. That's so great. And I just, you know, that whole like year before, I was literally telling everybody, I'm like, I want to play Southern characters. I want to play Southern characters. That's great. You're just, yeah. you know, you're putting it out in the universe and maybe who knows why, but it's coming back. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope that there, you know, I really yeah. think that it's, it's really due to, um, 
to, I mean, I'm actually really putting a lot of energy towards it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, I really believe in that. I think if anybody has uh, big goals or dreams, it's uh, it's not listening to anybody tell you no. And it's just keep, you know, if it, if it makes you happy still, like, keep going after it. That's awesome. And you've worked with Ryan Gosling before. Yeah, so, well, he? that was, I was, I would say the next. Ryan Gosling oh. was amazing <laughs> to work and nice guys. Um, that was just so fun. Um, and also Robert Downey Jr. in um, Iron Man. That was really awesome. That's so cool. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the um, the other thing that um, I think was really cool about Cold Moon and what I'm excited for people to see is uh, it was written by the same guy that did Beetlejuice, Michael McDowell. And his writing is amazing. And it's a suspense thriller. And we were actually just in Madrid, Spain, for the world premiere of that. Very cool. Um, and that one has more of a serious tone, correct? Yes. I mean, everything else going around is very, like, psychological suspense thriller. And um, my character, Belinda Hale, is uh, kind of the only... Uh, she's just full of life and light and joy. And everything else around her is pretty crazy and scary and intense. Well, that, that seems like a great project. I'm definitely interested in checking that out. Thank you. So yeah. now taking a different sort of more fun <laughs> topic, okay. um, let's do a fun game. And I so, love fun games. Yeah, so I'm just going to ask you some questions, and then if you could just kind of quickly answer. Okay. Um, who is your celebrity crush? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, well, I will say all growing up, um, Brad Pitt was always that one. I just have a big... Um, Thing for him, but uh, I actually just saw Ghostbusters last night, um, and um, I don't want to butcher his name, and that's really bad. Um, but uh, what's the guy's name in that movie? Blanking on it. Um, uh, man, have you seen it? Uh, I, no, I, I haven't. I'm like dying right now. I wish I could help blanking. you. I know it's just. I'll not look good, it up later. It's Chris good. Helmsworth. Yes, thank you, Chris Helmsworth. That's what it is. <laughs> Um, yeah, he's I, gorgeous. Absolutely, I was like, what? Like, it, it was one. Ghostbusters was amazing. I thought, um, and uh, his role in the movie was just fantastic. Awesome. So, yeah. So, Who's yours? I want to um, know. You know what? I would actually probably say the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> or his brother Liam, because okay. they're both yeah. absolutely Full. gorgeous. Beautiful. <laughs> um, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh, this is so cool because that's you know really what I want to do is superhero roles. Um, Gosh, I would love, um, I mean, there's so many things I'd love to be able to do, um, but I, I would love to be able to kind of transform into anybody that, um, because I would, I'm very curious about people and I love, I just love what makes different people do different things. And I would love to be able to just kind of morph into anybody that I would want to, uh, to be able to, you know, travel and speak different languages and, and, and you know, kind of be and do anything you want, uh, cause you could just be whoever you wanted. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Um, what is your pet peeve? Oh, um, that's a good one. Um, I would think that, uh, people like just thinking that they, they can't do stuff. Um, and more so I think just getting, even for myself, like getting in my own way. I really, that just frustrates me like crazy because I'm just like, gosh, I know what I need to do. I have all these things. I know exactly what I want to do. You know, why can't I do the things that I know that I want to do? Um, that and like cotton balls, like on my fingertips. I just, I don't like hmm. them. It feels weird. <laughs> What's your go-to dance move? Um, uh, so growing up a gymnast and a break dancer, uh, I think I kind of always do something called a K-kick. Uh, it's like a one-handed uh, handstand when your legs go over your head. That's cool. Yeah, it's really fun. <laughs> yeah, I would say do it now, but I don't think we really have the space for it. <laughs> um, yeah, but you can see me. I mean, lots of videos. I did it in center stage, and probably actually, I think I probably did it in in that dance video we just showed too. That's so, cool. Yeah. What's your favorite animal? I love dolphins. I love dolphins. Um, I especially when we were in Puerto Rico filming Atomic Shark, um, we got to see several of them. There was actually one that was right under the boat. And uh, it was just stayed with us the whole time. And um, I don't know, I just think they look so happy and like full of life and free and fun and um, fast, you know? I just think that's so cool. Very cool. Um, what's your favorite TV show? I have a couple right now. I got really into Quantico. Um, I really I like love that. One that. Too. Yeah. And I mean, that, you know, that role, um, that show would be such a dream come true. Um, so I really love that, um, and I got really into Nashville as well. Like, I just got hooked. <laughs> My friends make fun of me because, uh, yeah, Nashville was definitely, it just, I, I can't stop. <laughs> What's your favorite snack? Um, well, are we talking healthy snack or are we talking, Any, like, anything? anything? Yeah. Um, so honestly, probably, I know this is going to sound lame, but 
I am obsessed with almond butter and like all the different variations now of almond butter. Uh, it's so good. So like celery and almond butter or even like the coconut pieces and yeah, almond healthy, butter. Right? Yeah, it's yeah. very, it is very healthy. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm recently obsessed with like the coconut pieces and dipping it in almond butter That's and dark chocolate. I mean, it's like so good. I'm getting hungry now. I know. We do. <laughs> if you could travel anywhere tomorrow, where would it be? Oh my goodness, Australia. I've never been and I just have wanted to go so bad. Um, um, but if I had to go back to somewhere I went, it would be Cape Town. I did a job there and I just fell in love with that city. It's just so beautiful. Um, the beaches and the hikes and stuff like standing on top of Table Mountain um, filming was just like, it was epic. Hey, maybe your next movie will be in Cape Town yes. or Australia. <laughs> I mean, I think they even filmed part of Ghostbusters in Australia. So, Perfect. you know. Right there. <laughs> That's so great. Well, thank you so much for being here tonight. Oh my gosh, thank I you got for some questions. <gasps> All right. That's the voice in the booth. Oh, the Sorry. voice in the booth. Okay, so you talk about questions. how you're a big action fan of action yes. movies. So, what are some of your favorite action movies? And who are some of your female action stars that you looked up to, like a Jamie Lee Curtis? Or oh my a gosh, yeah, Weaver? absolutely. Um, so I is Angelina Jolie, like in Salt. That one movie always comes up. Like I really love that. Um, Million Dollar Baby was awesome, especially just because I, I mean, just fighting in general. I do a lot of boxing. Um, and um, Jennifer Garner, uh, incredible. Like, I mean, th there's just so many cool, uh, and not only, like, all those women, too. Like, uh, they've done so many incredible things, not only with, like, the films that they've done, but also with, like, just uh, with their lives um, and just, like, the impact that they've had in a positive way. I just really admire. So That's great. Yeah. Do you any, have any more yeah, questions? Any more questions? Up there? Um, Voice in the booth? What, what's like one of your favorite action movies, like Rambo, Kickboxer type style? And then is there any action star you would love to like star in a movie with, like Jean Claude Van Damme um, or Wesley Snipes or Oh Stallone? my gosh. Oh my god. Well, uh, Sylvester Stallone. Oh my gosh. Like Warrior. Well, that was a different one, um, but I was just had different things come in my head. Sylvester Stallone, absolutely. Like he's a hero of mine, even just his story. I don't know if you read his or listened to his like biography or just like his story of how, you know, the making of Rocky and everything he did to make it happen and like his like fight for his dream. Uh, just like, oh, that inspires me all the time. I mean, he got to the point where he was so broke and had so many people telling him no. Uh, you know, he had to like sell his dog that was like his like precious like best friend and then just the fact of him turning down Actually getting somebody to want to buy his film then him them him turning it down because they wouldn't let him play the lead um, And then finally getting to make it happen and actually getting his dog back and being in the movie. I was like Ugh, You're the coolest. That's pretty cool. Yeah, not to mention, you know, he's a and just an amazing just actor and fighter awesome. and everything so yeah from the Popcorn Talk Network and producers Maria Thank you Marino. very much. Thank you. And um, would you like to tell everyone where they can find you again on social media? Yes. Um, well, the best place um, where you can find all my stuff is rachelbsmith.com, and that's with the R-A-C-H-E-L-E. Uh, and that has all linked to, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Really active on Instagram, it's rbrooksmith. Uh, Twitter, Rachel B. Smith, and Facebook, Rachel Brooks Smith. And you're truly an inspiration, so thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, and please send me your guys. I would love people to send me their stories because with Disruptive, I'm really excited about just sharing the cool things, the cool disruptive things people are doing for positive change and really making it the support group and community of inspiring each other to do really great things. Awesome. Well, thank you guys, and thank, thank you. you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network for the online broadcast. From producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals.